Oh, greetings and welcome. We're wrapping up our series of weekly devotionals this week, looking at uh, chapter 14 of Paul's letter to the Roman, verses 1 through 12. And I want to begin with a story that was shared with me by our previous conference minister, Alan Miller. Alan was a great teller of stories, and he once told a story about a church where uh, they were resistant to change. They didn't want the altar moved. And, and so he really wanted to move the altar, but he didn't want to upset folks by changing things. And so he moved, he moved the altar like a quarter of an inch every Sunday until about six months later, he finally got it to where he wanted it positioned in the chancel area. And he said, you know, nobody ever noticed because he just did it. He just uh, changed it. A small, a small increment at a time, and and you know, I, I think maybe that's somehow have to, how we have to approach change in the church. People are resistant to it. You know, there's a story of this old timer, and someone said to him, "You know, in all your years in the church, you must have seen lots of changes." And he said, "Yup, and I've been against every single one of them." And I think that's that is uh, how some folks in the church are about change. Um, I know. Uh, at Forks, folks have been pretty good for the most part, I think. But, you know, you get the odd person who is not crazy about the screen being in church or, you know, newfangled music uh, using guitar instead of the pipe organ or selecting uh, different hymns. You know, I've had people uh, get angry because I wasn't wearing a robe and then I wore a robe and then people ask, well, why aren't you wearing a suit? And, you know, now I just wear uh, a suit. A polo shirt and jeans, so whatever. But uh, change is not something that we're we're often uh, real great with in the church, which is strange because our 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 church our our denom our our faith is based on Christianity is based on this story of the resurrection, um, which is is death being. Uh, transformed this notion of transformation our our entire faith is based upon transformation it's based upon change how we how we can live as resurrected folks as transformed individuals um, and and I think the apostle Paul uh, writes about this need for transformation um, let me read uh, these verses in chapter 14 Paul writes welcome those who are weak in faith but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions some believe in eating anything while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. Also those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. While those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us will be accountable to God. In that passage, Paul writes about the need for transformation the need to have a transformed mind and heart. And it is only then that we can truly be open to God and open to others that, that our sense of welcome and hospitality uh, grows from, emanates from, from change. We need to change. The Apostle Paul writes about this and, and, uh, and it's part, of, part and parcel of what it means to be a Christian. Uh, I'll share another Alan Miller story with you. He was called in to talk with members of a consistory uh, who were at their wits' end. This woman, uh, leader of the consistory, said to Alan, uh, we're exhausted. We're burning the candles at both ends. 
Um, you know, there's only a half dozen of us that are in, in, in part of the consistory, and we're serving on 12 different committees and boards, and, and we're at the church five nights a week because we have to have to meet for this committee and that committee and, and so on and so forth. And we, we can't keep this up. We're just, we're just exhausted. And, and Alan said, well, why, why do you have to have so many committees? Why do you have to have so many meetings? And she said, well, it's in our, it's in our constitution and bylaws. We have to have this many meetings. We have to have this many committees. And, and Alan said to the woman, well, why don't you just change your bylaws? And she looked at him exasperated and said, we can do that? <laughs> yes. Alan said, yes, you can change. It is possible. It's really okay. Uh, and I would say for all Christians, yes, it's okay. In fact, it's, it's sort of a prerequisite that we are called to change. Amen. Oh,